Yo, hey, what is up guys? How's it going? This is Kiko. So one thing that I learned about studying Japanese is that you should try and um, immerse yourself in the language. Pretty much what I'm saying is to go out and actually use the words that you learn while studying Japanese. Instead of just, you know, studying by a book or studying in a classroom, you should also, you know, you know, forget all the tests and forget all the quizzes, you know, get out there and use what you learned. So if I bust out a book or something and study Japanese in the book, I'm going to get bored really, really quick. But in Japan, you know, I went to the classroom and I did study, but outside of the classroom, I would try and use my words with my Japanese friends or like out at like the stores, you know, uh, like when I want to go grocery shopping and stuff. I would try and use like my Japanese and holy crap, it helped me a lot. So after I finished my study abroad program after that first year, I was coming back to America. I got on the plane and some American guy, he sat next to me, you know, he told me that he was from America. And I asked him, you know, what are you doing in Japan? How long have you been in Japan? You know, the uh, just uh, out of curiosity, you know, I wanted to know. And he told me that he was wor actually working in Japan and that he was going home for vacation or that his work program ended. One of the two, I don't know. So I asked him, you know, like, how did you get the job in Japan? How long did you work here? And, you know, how was it? How was everything? And he told me that back in the States, he just was looking online and somebody from Disneyland hired him and told him that they would send him to Japan. So he went to go work in the Tokyo Disneyland and he worked there for two years. My study abroad program was one year and this guy worked in Japan, Tokyo Disneyland for two years. So I'm like, okay, so you've been here for two years, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, how good is your Japanese? And he's like, um, you know, he was kind of like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, how many kanji can you read? And he's like, none. And I'm like, uh, but you can read the, the basic katakana and hiragana characters. He's like, no, can't read any of the characters or anything. And I'm like, my man, you've been here for two years and you can't read any Japanese? And he's like, no. And I'm like, all right, um, conversation you know how much you know how many japanese words do you know and he's like i only know the basic words like konnichiwa and arigato that's all i know i'm like <laughs> i'm like dude you've been here for two years and you're telling me you don't know no japanese like that's kind of weird so i asked him like so how did you get around you know what you do like like if you you're not, you didn't know any japanese what you what did you do to like live there you know because you gotta at least know how to read what you're buying or or try and talk to like the cashier and stuff and he pretty much told me that his job in disneyland they pretty much had english speakers guide all the foreigner workers around so pretty much he didn't have to use any Japanese because he always had someone that spoke English and Japanese and translated for him so he didn't have a need to learn Japanese good for him but I was kind of thinking like man like yeah like that's cool but I think if you're gonna be living in Japan for two years you should try and at least learn the language you know like learn or at least try and learn something of the language but no this guy didn't and it was kind of surprising for me like yeah if you go to travel to Japan and vacation or whatever and you don't know any Japanese words that's fine you're on vacation if you go live there for a year or go work over there for a year okay maybe that's fine too you know you're just there for work but if you're gonna be there for two years it's like come on you gotta at least try and learn the language right so that was kind of surprising for me but you know i kind of understand like if he's not really interested in learning japanese you know he's not gonna learn japanese so one day here's a different story um one day i went to like i was in hokkaido northern japan and, and sapporo so there isn't as many foreigners there but anyway i was going around sapporo and i was looking for like a good Spanish restaurant bar or whatever you know because I was looking for that good Mexican food a friend I met he showed me a, like a Spanish bar and I went there and they were playing a bunch of Spanish music it was awesome it felt kind of like home for me but anyway I started talking to the bar the bartender he was using his broken English I was using my broken Japanese but we were talking you know I was trying to speak Japanese and he in return was trying to speak English so I asked him you know the bartender I'm like who owns the bar you know who opened a, a Spanish bar here in the middle of Sapporo and he told me that the owner was from the Dominican Republic and that pretty much he opened the bar you know because um, he wanted to bring like Spanish music and, and like you know Latin culture into Japan so I, I asked him like so where is the owner right now and he told me that the owner was upstairs that he was teaching salsa you know salsa dance lessons you know and I'm kind of like that's cool man I never really see I've never seen Japanese people dance salsa so I wanted to check it out so I went upstairs and man I've seen Japanese people dancing salsa man to Spanish music so anyway I saw the owner I introduced myself and 
and I kind of wanted to talk to him, you know, because I speak Spanish too. So anyway, so me and him sat down and he, he kind of wanted, like, I kind of wanted to ask him about like the dancing and, and like, you know, what kind of events he has, you know, I wanted to know more about it, you know, and he kind of told me, you know, like, oh yeah, we dance every, I don't know, Thursday, Tuesday and Thursdays we practice. And then every weekend we have like a dance party and he was like the salsa dance instructor. So he was telling me all this stuff and we were conversating in Spanish, you know, I was throwing Spanish his way, he was throwing my, Spanish my way. And the reason for that is because he didn't speak any English. So we were just talking in Spanish. And then I asked him, um, all right, so you open this bar, you're teaching salsa, you know, you're bringing like Latin culture here to Sapporo. Um, how long have you been living here? And he told me, um, I've been living here for 20 years, 20 years in Sapporo, Japan. And I'm like, that's awesome, man. So I'm like, so you're pretty comfortable with the language then, you know, you're pretty fluent, huh? And he's like, actually, I don't speak any Japanese. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I don't know any Japanese. I don't know how to read the characters. I don't know anything about Japanese. So I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm like, dude, you... <laughs> so you've been living here for 20 years. You opened up a bar, you're a dance instructor and you don't know any Japanese or English for that matter. He's like, yeah. He's like, pretty much I teach my classes in Spanish. And the Japanese people who come to my dance classes, you know, they learn Spanish from me and it's dance classes. Like you don't really need to speak in dancing. You know, you just gotta show what you're doing so i'm like all right so you've been living here for 20 years you don't speak any japanese so how, how do you do it you know how do you live with your daily lives you know like when you're gonna do like important paperwork and stuff and he said that he pretty much has his wife do everything for him and i asked him like so your your wife is japanese and he's like yeah my wife is japanese hmm. i'm like where did you meet her did you meet her here in japan or and he pretty much said like no he said he was living in the dominican republic and his wife came to travel or study abroad or work in the dominican republic they met they got married and then and they both decided to move to Japan together. So now I'm like, all right, so how do you speak to your wife? If you don't know any Japanese, how do you guys conversate? And he pretty much told me that after they got married, he forced his wife to learn Spanish and his wife is a really good Spanish speaker and that's how they communicate through Spanish. And then his wife does like all the important stuff, like the, the business stuff in Japanese, you know? So he introduced me to his wife and me and his wife started speaking in Spanish, which was really weird for me, you know, speak to a Japanese person in Japan in Spanish. <sighs> So anyway, I conversed with them and they gave me like a, a schedule for when they dance and I came back to that bar next week and I tried dancing, you know, learning some salsa. I sucked at it, man. And I was surprised because I couldn't keep up with the Japanese salsa dancers, but it was a good time overall. And I just found the whole experience interesting meeting someone like that who, who owns a business in Japan from the Dominican Republic and they've been living there for 20 years and they haven't even tried to learn Japanese and then he forced his Japanese wife to learn Spanish. <sighs> it's weird, man. It's weird, but I mean, you know, people can do it, I guess. There's people who live over there and have lived over there for a long time and don't even try and learn the language. And I just find it very surprising. And also meeting a Japanese person who spoke fluent Spanish. Oh man, crazy times, man. But moral of the story, there isn't really a moral of the story. I guess all I'm trying to say is if you do go to another country and decide to live over there for a long time, you know, try and learn the language because it's a really good feeling when, when when you actually start speaking to locals in their language amazing feeling but yeah um i just want to share those little stories experiences nothing really that interesting but still if you did enjoy the video you know drop a like drop a comment subscribe to my channel if you want you know because i have a lot of things that i want to say about japan and my experiences over there and again if you did not like the video you know drop a dislike i don't really care let me know how i can improve and yeah i'll talk to you guys in the next one right peace out.